40Gate integration with LDAP services, single sign-on. In this video, we will learn how to leverage LDAP services to provide single sign-on functionality on the 40Gate firewall and have a seamless experience for our authenticated user. And this will allow us to use our Active Directory users and groups to give access to different resources instead of using local users on the 40Gate unit or having to authenticate again to the firewall and we can give them access to resources based on their Active Directory groups. Let's see how we can configure it on our 40 gate unit. First, we need to configure our DNS to forward traffic destined for our local Active Directory domain names to our Windows server. Right now, if we try to bing our Active Directory domain, we won't be able to resolve the local domain name right now. So we can just go to our DNS settings by going to config system dns we just have our public dns resolvers we just want to add one more statement for our domain and we just want to call this elasticcourse.local and next we need to configure our dns database so it would forward the queries destined for this domain name and send it to our windows server so we can go under config system dns database and we need to create a new entry just give it a number and here we need to define a few options first we need to define our domain again and then we need to disable the authoritative and finally we need to set this to forward to our windows server which is 192.168.1.116 and we hit next and end now if we try again we are able to reach our local domain names and finally, we need to go under config system DNS server so we can create an entry for our LAN interface. And we're just going to edit LAN. So here we need to specify which interface. And uh, if we do a show right now, there is nothing. We just need to set the mode to recursive and hit end. And now we have our DNS server configured. Now if we go back to our Windows client, we are still using the public DNS servers. So our goal right now to change our DHCP server to give the system interface IP for the LAN interface as the DNS server for this client so that when they try to resolve the local names, they get filtered by the DNS database and get forwarded to our local domain. Go back to our firewall. We just need to go under config system DHCP server. And our DHCP server on the LAN interface right now is using DNS service default. So it uses the same public DNS services configured on the 40 gate itself. We need to edit this entry and we can choose our DNS service. If we hit a question mark, the IP address of the interface of the DHCP server is our LAN interface. So if we change the DNS service to local, the firewall will give its interface IP for the LAN, which is 192.168.1.99, as the DNS server for the client, so that when the traffic for DNS comes to the 40 gate, the 40 gate will fork it out. If it's belong to the public, it will send it to the public DNS, and if it goes to the private, it will be forwarded to our Windows server, where we have our local private domain names. So we want to change this to local, and hit end. And now from our client, we just need to refresh our lease so we can get the updated information. If we do the command ibconfig slash release and then ibconfig slash renew, we should be getting a new DHCP lease from the 40 gate with the new settings. And we can see here that the DNS server had changed to 192.168.1.99. So if I try to bring my Active Directory domain from here, I'm able to reach it using the DNS database filter and the DNS server that we are running on the LAN interface. Now I'm able to join my PCs to the domain controller directly. And from our Windows server, we need to create an account for the 40 gate so the 40 gate can log into our server and read the security events. So it would allow the firewall to know which users are logged in to our environment, which IP addresses they are coming from, and the 40 gate will map these users name to IP addresses in the fabric 
we can create firewall policies and allow different levels of access based on Active Directory groups and users instead of using plain IP addresses that are subject to change in a DHCP environment. And finally, for the FortiGate user, we need to make sure that this user is a member of administrators group who will have access to get to the logs. Once we add two administrators, now we have everything we need to configure the FortiGate unit to communicate with this server. So now let's head into our cloud firewall. And first we need to define our LDAP server. So under user and device, there is a section for LDAP servers where we can add new servers. And here we can define the name. We can just call this our domain name or it could be any name. For the IP address, this will be 192.168.1.116, which is the Windows Server IP address. This will use LDAP normal port. Now we need to change this to regular and we need to put our username and password that we created for the 40 gate. We can test our connectivity and we have successful connectivity. So we just now need to browse to our LDAP and in here we can see all the different groups we have in our LDAP. So in here we can choose either the root of the directory or we can choose just the user's directory. We can leave it to root for now. So now we have a basic LDAP entry for our LDAP server running on-premises from our cloud firewall. This is going through the VPN tunnel. Now in order for us to connect to the Active Directory and pull the logged in users, we need to create a Fabric Connector. Fabric Connector is a feature that allows the firewall to connect to different services and provide a seamless integration in between. So under security fabric, we check our fabric connectors. We have nothing right now. Let's try create a new entry. And we have different services we can integrate with. So in this case, we just want to pull Active Directory server. So let's enter our server IP again and the username for the 40 gate. And we will choose our LDAP server. And enable polling will allow the 40 gate to communicate with this Active Directory server and read which users are logged in and map it to an IP address so we can use these users dynamically regardless of their IP address. And for users and groups, we need to define which users are we tracking with this connector. So it defaults to zero, we need to either choose individual users or we can also go under groups, choose our design department and choose our marketing department, mark these two and add selected and hit OK. And now we have our users and groups connected. Once we refresh the page, now our fabric connector is up. The way we can verify this is actually doing something, we can go under monitor and we go under firewall user monitor. 48 single sign on logins. So now let's try to log in into one of our devices to verify if the firewall can read that this user is logged in. So from our design BC, Username Adam is trying to log into his device. We're going to put our password for this specific Windows 10 client. And if we come back here and refresh, now we see a login from a username Adam coming from this local IP address. And this is using the 40 net single sign on using the Active Directory Fabric Connector. If we go back to check the logs for this IP address and we go down, we will see that the IP address was just showing normally before we add the fabric connector. And once we added the fabric connector, it start mapping the username Adam to this IP address. So even if we didn't know that Adam is using this IP address, we can filter policies based on their login name as well. Now if we do the same from the marketing BC and refresh our logins, now we see Julie as well has been logged in and her username has been added. We can also do the same from the CLI by going into Diagnose, Debug, Coordinate, Single, Sign-On, Bulling, Detail. And this will show us the connection to the Active Directory using our 40 gate credential. And if we try Diagnose, Debug, Coordinate, Single, Sign-On, User, it will show us all the IP addresses, which usernames they belong to, and the groups they belong to. And finally, the time they signed in into the device. Now we just need to create some sort of mapping 
between our Active Directory groups and the firewall groups. So we can start using these firewall groups in object like firewall policies and we can control users this way. So under user groups, we need to create our first single sign-on group based on Active Directory group. And in here, we need to define two different groups. We need a group for our marketing department and we need a group for our design department. This Active Directory group already exists in our environment. So we have our marketing team group already configured in Active Directory. And we also have our design team. Let's start with our marketing team. And for the type, we need to choose our Fortinet single sign-on. And for the member, we will see the two entries that we created in the fabric connector. So first we can choose our marketing team and we hit OK. And we can do the same thing for our design team. Now if we try again to log in into our test machines, we should be able to read these group names in our monitor. In here we can start seeing that Adam and Julie has been logged in, but now they are actually showing which user group they belong to. And this shows the name directly from the Active Directory, and this one is the user group object that we created manually on the firewall. So now we can use this object to create firewall policies and restrict traffic based on these Active Directory groups. So under policy and object, let's start by creating a new policy specifically for the traffic coming from our VPN connection. Go into the internet through this AWS cloud firewall. And for the source IP address, we will use all IP addresses and we will use restriction only by the user. You can either choose individual users from LDAP or you can choose a whole group. So for example, I want to restrict our design team from accessing all internet websites and allow all other marketing teams and other teams to have normal access to the internet. So I can choose all design team members and we choose all the IP addresses on the internet. And for this, all services will be blocked or I can only choose HTTP, HTTPS and we will deny this access and log all violation traffic. So now I have my first AD user group based policy but right now it's not in the correct order because the allow all policy coming from VPN to port one on these two IP addresses is accepted. So we need to make sure we put the policy in the correct sequence by moving it above the allow all policy. And this way if traffic coming from the VPN hitting the port one, which is the internet board, it will be evaluated against this deny policy first before getting evaluated against the allow all policy. So now it's time to test the connection from our design team PC. Let's head to our VMware to test this connection. And from our design PC, if we try to access any service on the internet that was previously working, we should not be able to access anything. Everything will be timing out on this design PC. But if we try the same from our marketing PC, we should have no problem accessing the internet. And if we open the FortiGate to check our policy, our deny policy right now has over 500 hits on it from all the web requests that is getting blocked by the firewall based on our AD user group. But also this is only for HTTP, HTTPS traffic. So from our design PC that is getting blocked to the internet right now, if we try to bing something on the internet, for example, if we try to bing Google IP, we are still able to reach the internet through this firewall because we are only blocking HTTP, HTTPS traffic. And that was for the user Adam. So we can also go into our logs and under forward traffic, now we can see all the traffic in the logs is also associated with the username on our Active Directory system. So we can see that Adam from design team was able to bing 8.8.8.8 but also he was getting denied access to the internet because of our HTTP, HTTPS policy number five. In the same time, Julie was able to access the same because she has the allow all policy based on her Active Directory group. And that's how you can restrict and allow access on a 40 gate using Active Directory and LDAP for single sign-on. Thank you for watching.